Hello, Custo community. My name is Ryan Magidimer, and I'm a product manager on the Azure SIMS Analytics team. Today I have with me Michal Barr, who's a program manager on the Azure Data Explorer team for this episode of Azure Data Explorer 101. So you may or may not know, ADX actually has a web UI that offers end-to-end -end data exploration. You can do anything from data ingestion to data querying, as well as visualizations and dashboards. Michal is going to walk us through the entire workflow end to end in the web UI. I'm going to hand it over to Michal. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Ryan. I'm Michal Barr, and I'm a program manager on the Azure Data Explorer team. If you have been following the series, you already know that ADX, Azure Data Explorer, is a big data analytics cloud platform optimized for interactive ad hoc queries. Azure Data Explorer provides a web experience that enables you to connect to your Azure Data Explorer clusters, ingest data using a guided wizard, write Custa query language queries, and visualize result sets by building shareable dashboards. Using ADX Web UI, you can even create your very own free cluster to which you can bring your own data and basically get started with ADX. Let's use a common scenario to take a closer look into the different areas and capabilities. In this scenario, a user is exploring ADX Web UI and possibly the service itself for the very first time. What they will want to do is create a free cluster. Creating a new cluster is quick and easy and, as I said, totally free. Let's give it a try. I will agree to the terms, and, to the terms of service and the privacy policy and just hit create. It may take a minute or two, but ta-da! Here's my free cluster. In this page, you can see uh, cluster details. There's also the list of databases. Right now, there's just one, my database. My database is empty. So let's go ahead and start ingesting data into it. In this example, I will ingest data from file, a file that contains a list of customers. So here you can see the ingestion uh, wizard that walks me through the steps of ingesting, of ingesting data into a database. Uh, my free cluster and my, the database of, of my free cluster as, are auto-populated here, and I will create a new table because I don't have anything right um, just yet there. I'll go through the steps. Yes, I'm creating from a file. I'll choose my file right here, click Next. And I'll see how the file is parsed. I can see a preview, a partial data preview of the records in, in this uh, table. And I'll start the ingestion. Once done, again, I can see a data preview. But the other nice, nice thing that I can do is uh, use quick queries here to just take a quick look at uh, the data that was ingested. Let's do number of rows. With the query, for number of rows, which is customers count. And you can see that in addition to the help cluster, now I'm, I also see my free cluster here with the database and customers table that I just populated. I can also, I can continue to uh, explore and look at the data. Let's just take a quick look at the first 100 rows uh, of this table, randomly chosen. And here is my uh, results grid with the 100 records that I just retrieved. And yeah, this cluster is fully functional. I can create its, um, I can create uh, functions. I can add tables. I can add additional databases. It's there for me to use and um, explore all the capabilities of Azure Data Explorer. Note that you can also always go back. To, my, to the free cluster page, to my cluster page, basically, and upgrade to a full-blown Azure cluster, uh, which will give you even more enhanced, even uh, more capabilities and more enhanced uh, functionalities. Going back to our scenario, the user has started their ramp up on KQL. They gained some experience writing queries, both on the provided data sets and on the data they ingested to the free cluster. Now it's time to work on visualization of the data and insights. In other words, dashboards. I'd like to start from a query. 
So I'm going to work with the storm events table. Um, this is the take 100 random record. So I know what the data set looks like. I know what the table is all about. And now I can write another query that actually looks at uh, specific states and specific event types. And I want to summarize, I want to aggregate the data um, per state and event type. I want to look at the sum of damage property. So I'll run this query and I get this, this result. And the next thing that I want to do is build a dashboard uh, with this data because I think it's it's meaningful and important for, for me and my team. So I'll go ahead and click share and then pin to dashboard. Uh, what happens next is that I can, um, I, I need to provide a name for the tile, damaged property. Um, and I'll say that it's a new, um, it's a new dashboard and I want to create it, want to, want, want to view it after I create it. So here I am. This is my first dashboard with one tile. I'm in view mode. I can switch to edit mode. And when I switch to edit mode, I can add more tiles. I can change the layout of the tile or the tiles in my dashboard. And I can also edit this one specific tile, which I'm going to do next. I see the source, the data source, um, the database basically that I'm um, that I'm querying, the actual query that is underlying um, that is the underlying query of the tile. So this is where I started, and the results in a tabular format. Uh, what I can do next is I can change the visual type. I can choose a column uh, chart, for example, and I can say that maybe I want it to be stacked. Um, you can see that because Texas has so many um, has suffered such high damages, then it kind of makes the California and Oregon data disappear. So I can control that as well. Uh, I can say, let's just limit uh, this to 100 million, maybe. And then it's more, I'm losing data, but it's more meaningful. My point here that I can use this pane here to make changes to the way the data is viewed. Um, and I can change on the fly, uh, look at the results um, and, and basically make all these changes um, to, to the visualization, to this one specific visualization. There's also ways for me to define cross filters and drill through. I can also add parameters to this uh, whole dashboard. So in, in general, what I should say at this point is the dashboard is a very powerful tool. Um, let me just add one more tile. So say I want to add um, just, um, you know, just statistics of how many rows are, or how many storm events we're there, I can add a visual. And for this one, I choose to show it as a stats, maybe. And I'll apply my changes. So I have a new tile, I can change the layout. And when I'm done, I can, um, I should save my changes. And the next thing that I'll probably want to do is share it with others. Um, so I can uh, manage permissions and then copy the link to this dashboard and share with, share with folks on my team um, that are interested in this dashboard. Let's recap. In this session, you saw the four main parts of ADX Web UI, data, query, dashboards, and my cluster. We discussed the common scenario of a user who is evaluating ADX and its capabilities. Starts with exploring sample data set, which are provided with a public help cluster moves on to query the data to build, to build dashboards that show the insights in a visually appealing way. We also talked about the next step in this scenario, creating a, first, a free cluster, which allows the user to query and visualize their data after ingestion. That's all for today. I hope you found this session useful. Well, that wraps up our video for today. Thanks, Michal. Tell us in the comments. Have you used the web UI for ADX? Again, my name is Ryan Majidomer. You can find me on Twitter. You can find Azure Data Explorer on Twitter, AZ Data Explorer. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.